Welcome to this alpha release showcase of Easy Raiders Task Helper for Factorial. I have used a good amount of time developing the tool and would like to know if this is something the Factorial community is interested in. The purpose of the tool is to help players who would like to attempt a tool assisted speedrun. I will now make a walkthrough of the current features of the tool in this order. Menu bar Parameters, Tasks, Task List, Buildings List, Groups, and Templates. In the end, I will give a little example. The file menu is relatively standard. New will reset the tool. Open will open a saved file. Save and Save As will save the run. And Exit will close down the application. The script menu is used to choose a folder location for the files needed to make the run work in Factorio. Generate script will generate the files. The choose location menu will be triggered if a location has not been chosen. The folder location needs to be in the Factorio mods folder. For my example, I choose YouTube showcase as the name of the run. The program will generate the files needed to create a mod in Factorio, which will execute the tasks added to the task list. The mod can be disabled like any other mod by opening Factorio, going to mods and uncheck it. The available shortcuts will be shown in the shortcuts tab, and it will be possible to change these shortcuts by clicking change shortcuts. The goal tab is used to choose a speed run the Steel Axe, Get on Track Like a Pro, or the Any% percent Speedrun. When Steel Axe is chosen, a greeting will be shown in-game when the Steel Axe research is done. The same is true for Getting on Track Like a Pro when a train is built, and Any% percent when a rocket is launched. Now we get to the main part of the tool, and there is a lot going on. So I will break it down in sections, give a brief explanation of each section, and then go in more details with an example. I do expect that the brief explanation will leave some with a bit of confusion, but I hope the example will help. The first section is the parameters. These are used to specify information needed for the tasks. The next section is the tasks. There are 18 different tasks to choose from, which together makes it possible to make any of the three speedruns. The next section is the tasks list, which provides a sequence of tasks. There are five functions connected with the task list. You can add a task, and as an example, I add three walk tasks. They are all to the same location, which is not too useful. I therefore choose to change two of them by changing the X coordinate and pressing change. Maybe it turns out that I only need two, so I delete the one I don't need. And maybe the sequence of tasks is not correct, so I move one of the tasks up or down. The buildings list will show a sequence of the buildings built. If I add a quick build task by choosing Built and pressing Alt A, an accumulator will be added to the buildings list. The group list is used to gather specific tasks like fueling burner mining drills or furnaces, taking iron plates, putting science packs in labs and so on. A name is given to the group and the new group button is clicked to save the group. Tasks are added from the task list by pressing the button. Tasks can then be changed, deleted and moved just like the tasks in the tasks lists. A group can be deleted by pressing the delete group button and tasks can be added to the task list by pressing the button. Templates are pretty much like groups, but a bit more powerful. Templates have the same functionality as groups with add, change, delete and move, but they also have an X and Y offset. This makes it possible to make something like a blueprint, but for the character. As already said, if that was confusing, then hopefully it will become clear with an example. I will start out by clicking New to reset the tool 
and start factorial. Before we start out, we need to enable coordinates in the game so we can see where we're located. This is done by pressing F4 and then choosing Show Detailed Info. It is now possible to see that the character is located around minus 25, 55. Normally the first task will be to walk somewhere, so it seems fitting to start here. Walk only needs to know the X and Y coordinates the character should walk to. My location is not the standard starting location given that I use a saved game. I will therefore write a walk task as the first task to make the tool aware of our starting location. The next step would be to build something. We therefore choose the build task. This task needs a location for the building. Minus 16, 42 seems like a good location. We then need to choose what building should be built and the orientation of the building. If the building doesn't have an orientation, then it doesn't matter. There is the possibility to do a task in a specific direction. In this example, we want to start out by building five burner mining drills and therefore choose burner mining drill as the item. A drill has an orientation and after this we will add furnaces to the right of the drill. We therefore choose east as the building orientation. We would like to build from the top down and therefore choose south as the direction. There shouldn't be any space between the drills, so a building size of 2 is chosen and we want 5 drills, so 5 is chosen as the amount of buildings. This might not entirely make sense currently, but hopefully it will in a second. The task is added and the script is generated, so we can see what these tasks actually do. We started out by resetting the tool, so the location for the script has to be chosen again. The script walks up to the point needed to build the first drill and then builds a row of them. We could have chosen a building size of 3 if we wanted to have one space between the drills. We can do this by clicking the build task in the tasks list, changing the building size and then pressing change. The script is generated again and the saved game is launched. As expected, we get one space between each of the drills. We do not actually want that, so we change the task back to a building size of 2. We now want to build 5 stone furnaces. To do so, we just need to change the X coordinate and the item. Everything else can be left the same, given that we want to build them the same way as the drills, and a stone furnace has no orientation. The task was added before the drill task, so we choose to move the drill task up. The script is generated again, and the saved game is launched. Now both the drills and furnaces are built, and the drills are facing towards the furnaces, but they have no fuel to actually work. To address this issue, we choose a put task. Put will normally be used to put fuel, raw resources, intermediaries and so on into buildings. Here we will use it to add fuel to the drills and furnaces. We can start out by providing the stone furnaces with fuel given that we already have the coordinates. We need to choose the amount of units we would like to provide. One seems sufficient. We already have coal in our inventory, so we choose that as the item. Fuel should be put into the fuel inventory of the furnaces, so fuel is chosen. We do not need to change the rest, given that we want to put one unit of coal into all five furnaces. The X coordinate is changed to line up with the build task. We want to put three units of coal into the drills, given that this amount pretty much lines up with one coal in a furnace an add task is pressed. It is of higher priority to put fuel into a drill, and we therefore move the task up so it is done before the build furnace task. We pressed move up too many times and got a warning telling us that the task added is no longer connected with a building. This makes sense given that we move the put task in front of the build task. So when we try to put the coal, the building has not been built. We fix this mistake by moving the put task down, so it is after the build task. The script is generated again to see what has happened. 
The drill and furnace now has coal added as fuel. It can though be a little hard to see what happens. This is where the game speed task is handy. We can add this task to the task list to slow down or speed up the game. We choose to add a game speed task with a slower speed by writing 0.1. This will make it easier to see what happens. The game speed has a color so it is easier to spot when there are hundreds of tasks. We generate the script and launch the saved game. It is now very apparent that the tasks are executed in the same sequence as the tasks list. The observant of you might be a little confused why the character is moving when there is only a single walk task, which is only there to point out the starting location. This is because the tool has a function which will estimate the best way to get close enough to do a task. It is not a pathfinding system, so the character will run into obstacles if they are placed in the shortest path. The game speed is changed back to the normal game speed. It will take 4 seconds for the drill to deliver to the furnace and another 3.2 seconds for the furnace to make an iron plate. It would be a good idea to optimize that time, so we want the character to mine some iron, and we therefore choose the mine task. It makes sense to mine minus 18.5, 49.5, given that it is within reach. The units is the amount of ticks which should be mined. 60 ticks should be 1 second, and it takes 2 seconds to mine iron ore. We set units to 125 to be sure that it finishes. We could also write 1000 units given that the task will end when the resource is mined. We would like to put the iron ore into a furnace so it can start melting. We more or less need the same parameters as when we fueled the furnaces, and we therefore double click the put task, which gives us those parameters. We only have one iron ore, so the amount of buildings is changed to one. The add task is pressed, but we get a warning telling us that the item chosen is not a valid fuel. This makes sense given that iron ore is indeed not a fuel. We want to put the iron ore into the input of the furnace. We change the input and press add. We will need to mine and put iron ore multiple times and it therefore makes sense to create a mine and put group. We select the rows we want, in this case mine and put, and press add from tasks list. It will be inefficient to only insert iron ore into one furnace, given that it takes a shorter amount of time to mine than to melt. We therefore change the coordinates of the put. We get a warning telling us that the building doesn't exist, so we have most likely chosen a wrong set of coordinates. The buildings list can show us what coordinates the next furnace in the row has, and we have indeed typed in the wrong coordinates. The coordinates is fixed, and change is pressed once again. Now we can add the new set of mine and put tasks to the group. This will make it easy for us to alternate between the two furnaces. We would need to alternate between more than two furnaces, but two will do for this example. At this point, one furnace has been melting for a good amount of time, and we are not going to be able to mine fully another time before it is done. Currently we have no need for a single iron plate, so we will not go out of our way to get the output, and we therefore choose to mine once more and put that into the furnace. All five furnaces have now received an iron ore from the drills and start to produce iron plates. We want to take the iron plates as soon as they are ready, so we can begin crafting iron gears for more drills. We can mine fully one more time before they are done, but then we should partially mine the next time, and we need to know for how long. We therefore choose to use the idle task after the mine task. The idle task will not be executed if it is the last task and another idle task is therefore added. We need to slow down time so a game speed task is added. The script is generated and the game is launched.
It seems like 50 ticks is the amount of time which can be mined before the iron plates are done. The idle function is a little inefficient compared to just mining, and 5 ticks are therefore added to make it 55. We split the mine task up into two, one with 55 so we can get the iron plates when they are done, and one with the standard 125 so it finishes the mine task. At this point the iron plates should be done and it should be possible to take them. We more or less need the same parameters as when we fuel the furnaces, and we therefore double click the put task, which gives us those parameters. We then select take, write zero in unit so we get all the plates, write iron plate and output given that we want to take iron plates from the output of the furnace. This task will take all the iron plates from the five furnaces. We want to add this task in between the two mine tasks. Tasks are added above the selected row and we therefore select the mine task with 125. We should now have at least 5 iron plates and it is therefore possible to craft 2 iron gear wheels. We choose craft and keep the units at 0 to indicate that we just want to craft as many as possible and write iron gear wheel as the item. Research will be a part of any run, and the first tech to research will normally be automation. We therefore choose tech, write automation, and add it to the tasks list. At this point we want to have an extra row of drills and furnaces. We therefore choose to make a template. We would like to save this template, so it is given a name and a new template is pressed. We would like to have the origin coordinates to be 0, 0 and therefore write 16 and minus 42 as offsets and press add from task list. We can now put a new offset to place the tasks. We want it to be on the right of the current row, so minus 12, 42 seems correct. Add to tasks list. The script is generated and the game is launched. I hope that the example cleared up some of the confusion. As stated in the beginning, the purpose of the video is to showcase the tool, but just as much to get feedback from the community. So please remember to like if you think this tool is interesting and leave a comment if you have feedback. There are more tasks and helpful warnings, but in the interest of time, I will stop the video here. Thanks for watching.